greater works will you do? You know, we have the advantage of all this technology and all of this uh, stuff at our hands, you know, the internet, the, 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 the uh, let's just say the megaphones and all of these things that can project the message of salvation. But I'm here to tell you today, until you can let go of stinking thinking, until you can turn from, let's just say, from, from the doubt, from the worry, from the fear, the anxiety, and the different things that go along with uh, giving place to the enemy, then and only then will you be able to see yourself growing, prospering, and turning into that man, that woman that God would have you to be. So, you know, you don't want to, you know, you really have to check yourself because you need to ask yourself, am I overwhelmed by the things that I might be dealing with in life? You know, sickness can be overwhelming, man, because I didn't, I didn't want to be sick this long. Every time I go to the doctor, I'm getting another report, something else happened, or, or, or the medication is not doing what it's supposed to do, and I'm tired of these x-rays, I'm tired of these tests, I'm tired of swallowing down all these pills, and I'm tired of having to shoot myself up with the needles and the this and the that, so on and so forth. I'm tired of dealing with this uh, a pain that I have to deal with on a daily basis. And it can be overwhelming, and it can be so overwhelming it just make you want to, or make those of us who are dealing with these infirmities, these afflictions, make us just want to give up, make you want to quit. Well, I'm here to let you know, my brother, my sister, don't you give up, don't you give in. No, 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 the devil is a liar. I'm here to remind you that you are more than a conqueror, because greater is he who is in you. Greater is he who is in you. I'm not just talking about Jesus. You have the Holy Ghost working on the inside over the change in your life. Truly, if you look back over your life, you can truly say you're not the man or the woman that you used to be. I might not. You might not be where you want to be right now. But I believe this is why God is bringing this message today. Because somebody has placed limits on God. Could it be because God is not working fast enough? Not moving fast enough in your life and you want God to move now? You want to see your situation change now? It should have happened yesterday? Well, well, understand, there's a process that all of us have to go through. And we have to be able to examine ourselves to see if we're still in the faith because some of the stuff that we're going through can bump us, move us aside. It can be a distraction. And it can cause us, let's just say, to move away from the blessing and not toward the blessing. Yes, God has sent you here to be a blessing. He has sent you here to be a blessing. And the only way you can do that is when you don't place limits on God. Because as I said, when you place limits on God, you're placing limits on yourself. And that's not what this is about. So let me, let me start here. You have to be honest with yourself about yourself. Mm, mm -mm. Now I know some of you out there might be looking at yourself and you might not like what you see. Oh, I can't believe I did that. I mean, every time I make a promise to God, for some reason I fall short. For some reason I, I just can't seem to, to live up to my promises and so on and so forth. You know, the Bible says there is no condemnation for those of us that would be in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Now, there's a difference between being convicted and being condemned. You're not here to condemn yourself. You're not here to beat up on yourself. God didn't send his word to beat up on you, but to expose the error, to expose the mistakes that we can, you know, some of us are, are recycling, recycling a lot of negative energy, recycling a lot of hurtful things, recycling the stinking thinking and and we're telling ourselves that we're not good enough. We're telling ourselves that we can't make it. We're telling ourselves that nobody loves us. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody cares about me. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, I'm here to tell you today, that God so loved the world, God so loved you, that he gave, he sent his one and only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him, my brother, my sister, if you believe in him, I'm here to tell you, he's a way maker. He's a heart fixer, inner mind regulator. I'm talking about the God that can do anything but fail. I'm talking about the God that is, 
that is, let's just say, there for you 24-7, 365, and in the leap year, 366. There's not a day, there's not a day you call upon him that he won't show up and won't be there for you. How many times have you called on friends and, and loved ones and who promised, well, you, you ever find yourself in a bind, just give me a call. Just, 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 just knock on my door. Just, just, just what, reach out and I'll be there. Either you couldn't get in touch with them or whatever the case may be, they wasn't able to fulfill the promise. But I'm talking about a God that will not let you down. I'm talking about a God that will show up, not just, let's just say, in the good times, but he'll show up in those hard times, especially in those hard times. My God. Because he knows mm, that we're living behind the enemy lines. He knows we're going to need his help. He knows that you, we know that we can't make it on our own. We can't make it without him. mm, -mm. Either you're going to conform to the world, either you're going to accept or uh, what he's dishing out. You're going to, you don't want to drink the devil's Kool-Aid now. Mm -mm, you don't want to drink it. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Why? Because when you look back over your life, you can say, man, I didn't, I didn't put down a whole lot. Of, I didn't drunk a whole lot of that Kool-Aid, and I didn't, I didn't like the after effects of that. Some of us with the drugs. I didn't like the after effects of the drugs. I didn't like the after effects of the alcohol. I didn't like the after effects of uh, chasing the flesh and all of these other things that we can get enmeshed in or entangled in. You know, the Bible says we are all drawn away by our own lusts. What's driving you today? What's, what's driving you today? What's in your spirit today that you feel you just have to do? And apart from God, we can do nothing. But with Him, all things are possible. Because when you're running with the devil, believe me, it's nothing, it's nothing but pain and suffering. And I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're going through right now. But if you're not at a good place, I'm here to tell you, maybe you need to get honest with yourself about yourself. Because really, it's the choices that we live by that's either going to make us or break us. You are a free will agent to make a choice and a decision whether you choose to go with God or whether you choose to do your own thing. And when you're doing your own thing, you're doing what the devil would have you do. Are you hearing me? See, see, so you have to look and you have to ask yourself, am I doing those things or am I allowing myself to think in a manner or in a way that would cause me to place limits on God? See, because the devil is tricky, man. I mean, that devil is tricky. He's been around a long time now, much longer than we've been here on the planet. And there's a good chance he's going to still be here after we're gone. He's learned some tricks. He knows how to work his show. And his show is to what? To get you to turn from God, to, 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 to think that God is not real. Isn't that amazing? He wants you to think and act like God is not real. Mm, mm, mm. And when you look back over your life at the many, and I'm speaking to you, you saints, you believers, those of you who call Christ Jesus your Lord and Savior, isn't it amazing there are times in our lives when we just, where you at, God? And I'm not going to say he's going to be up in your face all 24-7, no. Well, sometimes, you know, he might take a step back, let you do what you do because you know, he wants you to, let's just say, to walk some things out so that you can see the reality of what you're living. Because you just might have placed some limits on God. Jesus. You know, we're reminded in Scripture to watch and pray. To watch and pray. And let me add, it's also important that you pay attention to your attitude. Lord Jesus, pay attention to your attitude. Because we know a negative attitude will also limit God and keep him from doing all he might want to do for you. Mm, mm, mm. And you know, the Bible says there is no limit as to what God can do. And what he's done for others, you know, he's willing to do for you. And we have seen God bless other people. We've seen God, I mean, bless them exceedingly and abundantly. And man, I wish that was me. It could be you. Matter of fact, you know, let me let me say this. Because when you see someone blessed and you know that God has laid the smack down blessing on them, 
then you don't get uptight, don't get mad, don't talk about them. Don't be so envious of them because the real deal is the same God that has blessed them. He's, in the, he's able to bless you. Be happy for them. Be happy for them. You know why? Because what I'm seeing in, uh, God do in the life of someone else, I can say, well, I'm next in line to be blessed. That's what I should be telling myself right now. You should be telling yourself right now, I'm next in line to be blessed. I mean, those of us that know we're living right. Those of us that know we're living, you know, as close to the book, as close to the word, in the will of God, not placing limits on God, but walking in faith, believing that all things are working together for the good, even though it might not be working for you right now. I'm trusting God to the end. You don't want to place limits on God, my sister. You don't want to place limits on God, my brother. You better than that. Did you hear what I said? You are better than that. But it's going to take you taking that leap of faith. Let me give you some scripture. I don't want you to say that the man of God came on the air and he didn't even give me a verse of scripture. So coming out of the book of Psalms, chapter 7, 78, 7, 8, starting at the 35th verse, here's what it says. Then they remembered that God was their rock, and the Most High God their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they flattered Him with their mouth, and they lied to Him with their tongue. Ooh, Lord Jesus. How can good and bad water come out of the same fountain? Lord Jesus. And with my mouth, I'm saying, oh, the Lord is so good. But with my tongue, God don't love me. If God loved me, he wouldn't let me go through all the stuff I'm going through right now. And sometimes we just need to check ourselves. Matter of fact, uh, the Bible says we have to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, meaning slow to get angry. Quick to hear. You have two ears, you have one mouth. That means I should be listening more than I'm speaking. You want to learn something? Listen. Listen. Listen to what's being said. And, and when you can begin to, let's just say, to, to, to guide yourself, let's just say, guide yourself into all truth, and the truth is in the Word of God. You know, we have to be, and, and how are you going to be guided? By the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, He has a voice. He's the third person in the Godhead, and He too wants to speak to you. But because we might be yabba, 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 and talking so much and saying bad things to ourselves about ourselves, we're not here or not able to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. And we're placing limits on God. Let me finish reading that. The 37th verse says, For their heart was not steadfast with Him, nor were they faithful in His covenant. But He, being full of compassion, we're talking about the Lord now, being full of compassion. Forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Lord Jesus. When I think about some of the things that I've done in my life, I'm not even talking about you. I'm just looking back over my life right now. And I'm talking about me. Whew, it's amazing that I'm still... I, God, whew, you must love me. And, and, and all of us can sit back and say the same. Because when you look back over your life and where he brought you from, you know that God must love you. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He must love you. If he's forgiven you of some of the things that you have done to yourself, not talking about what you may have done to, to family, what you may have done to loved ones, what you may have done in a marriage, what you may have done in your church, what you may have done in your ministry, what you may have done... That could be a, let's just say, a way of discrediting the God that you say you love. You talk about how much you love the Lord, but are you living like you love Him? Mm, mm, mm. The, 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 matter of fact, 38 verse, matter of fact, he says here, let me finish that 38 verse. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they, that we were but flesh. He remembered that we're flesh. 
from the dust of the earth. A breath that passes away and does not come again. Oh, Lord. Did you hear what I said? A breath that passes away and does not come again. You know, right there, that's a whole message right there in itself. Because you have to live your best life now. Tomorrow's not promised to none of us. And we have to realize that life is not as long as you might think it is. It's a breath. It's fleeting. You know, once I was young, but now I'm old. Once I was blind, but now I see. You know, we, we have to be able to see, know and understand that we have to live our best life now while we have the time and while we have a chance. And this is why it's so very important. So very important that you don't pollute this mind of yours. The Bible says, hide the word in your heart. You know, what gets up there in your mind want to work its way down into your heart. And then man, oh man, and then out of the heart comes the issues of life. What you're living, if you're not happy with what you're living, is because you've allowed what got into your mind to work its way down into your heart. And maybe it wasn't the right information or good information that you're able to live by. Maybe it could be information filled with doubt, with fear, with worry, anxiety. The different negative elements that are in the world today. You know, we're breathing in and sometimes, you know, we can be walking behind a garbage truck. And that don't smell too good. I don't care what city, what state you in. Garbage is garbage. And it, a garbage truck is a garbage truck. And it don't smell good. Mm, mm, mm. Are you hearing me? But it's something about that word of God. See, it's something about the word of God that's able to resonate in our hearts and our lives that can help us to, let's just say, get on that straight and narrow, help us to turn our lives around, help us to come to that place where we can have a lively hope and expectation that the best is yet to come, not to give up, not to give in, not to throw in the towel, but to keep on pressing for the blessing. You know, because we're all going to be squeezed now. You know, in order to get the juice out of a grape, you got to squeeze it. You know, you squeeze that thing. You squeeze that grape and the, and the juice is going to gonna flow. And, and I'm here to tell you, you got some good stuff inside you. Don't you give up. You're going to be squeezed. The Bible talks about being pressed on every side. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, whoo, Lord, every side, every side. I mean, just stuff just coming at me from all directions. But because greater is he that is in you. You're still standing, and you're still able to make a, a, a positive mark. You're still able to make a positive difference in spite of the adversity, in spite of the affliction, in spite of, you know, ooh, Lord, those negative things or elements that are coming at you to break you down. My sister, my brother, mm -mm, shake it off right now in the name of Jesus because you're better than that. You're better than that. You're better than that. And, 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 and look at what he says in the 40th verse. How often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Talking about the Israelites right now. But even when we were in our wilderness, isn't it amazing how we can take ourselves back into a wilderness? We can take ourselves back into a wilderness. You know, and, and, and you know, you can be a you can be a good sister, good brother, love the Lord. You know, but you're subject to, you know, I, I, I was listening to the testimony of someone that I, I, I know very well and love dearly, you know, shared that, you know, and I know they've been saved for over 30, some 30 years or more, and but yet and still over 10 years ago, they, they went back to drinking. You know, we, we, you know, we all fall short of the glory. And we recognize and realize that it's an awesome God that's keeping us. Because if we were able to keep ourselves, there's some things that we have done that we would not go back to. But thank God for mercy and grace. Thank God for His mercy and grace. And His mercy and grace is renewed daily. That's if you're willing to come before Him and repent. And I'm thanking God that, that my dear friend is, is, is back on track, making big strides in the body of Christ. And that's what this is about. Not laying down in your mess. 
not because I had fallen and, 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 and messed up and, and did something that I know was not pleasing to God. You can make a choice and a decision to lay in that mess, or you can make a choice and a decision to get up and to rise above it. Oh yes, you are amazing, my brother. You are amazing, my sister. You know, I have a prayer line that I minister on Monday through Thursday, and I tell them every day, you are amazing. Those of you that come to the line, you are amazing. Why? Because you have a great God working in you, and He's given you the Holy Spirit who have imparted gifts in you. Did you hear what I said? You have a gift, oh Lord Jesus, in you. A gift that can define you and make you that somebody that you don't even know you're able to be today. You mean to tell me I could have been doing this all the time? You mean to tell me that, whew, that I could have accomplished this? I could have started that business. I I could have uh, I could have been leading the choir. I could have been singing in the choir. I I could, I could be a minister today. Whew. Why? Oh, and and who? Some of the pastors that are standing before you. If you knew their story, my God, my God. So the real deal is, I'm looking up to Jesus because I know Him to be faithful. And we all, like I said, we all fall short of the glory. But that's not an excuse for us to go back into into let's just say to to to, to relive or to rehash those things that have limited us, that have caused us to, to operate in dysfunction, Lord Jesus. Some are living in an alternate reality, mm, lying to themselves. It's going to be all right. You know, think about those that's on them drugs and, yeah, well, this is going to be my last time. New Year's come and uh, uh, this is going to be my last time. I'm going to get high. I'm not going to hit the pipe no more. I'm not going to shoot up no more. I'm not going to smoke no more reefer. Oh, no, I'm not going to drink no more alcohol. Mm -mm, no, 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 no. And the very thing that we say we're not going to do on December 31st is the very thing we're doing January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and on down the line. Are you hearing me? Why? Because we do not have the ability within ourselves to fix ourselves. We need God. You need God. And thank God that we didn't place limits on Him. And if we can do it for someone else, I'm here to tell you, He can do it for you. Mm, mm, mm. And you know that 41st verse says this, and it's so very important that we see this. It says, yes, Again and again, they tempted God. Again and again. That's what we're talking about. That's what I've been talking about. Again and again, we fall down, but we get back up. Donnie McClurk can sing a song. You know, we fall down, but we get back up. And my brother and my sister, I don't care how many times you get knocked down. You get back up. You fight a good fight of faith and know that all things are working together for the good. Know that God so loves you. Don't you give up and don't you give in. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me at the, whether it's morning, noon, or night? I don't care when you're listening to this. This message is for you. This message is for you. Don't limit God. Because when you limit God, you're limiting yourself. And look what he goes on to say. Look what he goes on and says. And, and uh, uh, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And did what? Limited the Holy One of Israel. Don't you limit God. Don't you limit God. There is no secret as to what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do for you. I'm talking about the God that stood out on nothing at the corner of no place and made the world twirl. The same God that put the sun, the moon, the stars in the sky. The same God that put the bird in the air, the fish in the sea, the cattle on the land. The same God that cut a valley between the mountains. Are you hearing me? The same God that thought enough of you to have you here now. Not 500 years ago. Not, not 300 or 1,000 years from now. You're here now. Why? He sent you here now with purpose. He sent you here now with purpose 
You are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose. And God's will and purpose for your life is always better than what you can conjure up, manufacture, or make happen on your own. Don't limit God. Understand that God knows the what he sent you here to do. And this is why, you know, we have to seek not just his hand, but seek his face. I want to know him. I don't just want to know him in the pardoning of my sins. I want to know him as my keeper. Woo! I, I want to know him. I want to know him so I can see. And the more I know about him, the more I'll come to know and learn about myself. This is why we study to show ourselves approved Workman, not a shame. A workman is someone that's got to work the word. You have to be able to work this word of God in your life and see where you're at in the pages of the book. It works when you work it now. You give up, you give in, you're going to end up at a dead end. End up in the cul-de-sac, not going no place. And if you stay parked on the highway long enough, let me tell you what'll happen. Somebody's gonna break into your car. If you leave your car parked on certain streets, somebody will break into your car and they will get the battery. Now once the battery's gone, that car's not moving. And they take the they'll take the tires, the wheels off the car, they'll strip the car of its radio and all this other stuff, you know, for resale or whatever they do with it. But the real deal is that car now it's, because it's been abandoned then you don't want to abandon the dream or abort the promise that God has made, you know, or, or have given to you. Are you hearing me? God is speaking life over us today. And he wants us to be able to see that we're not here to place limits on him, but we're here to work with him, work with his Holy Spirit. We're here to utilize this word to edify us, to build us up, and to bring us to a place, mm, mm, mm where we can be happy with ourselves and in love with our Jesus. Are you in love with him today? Because when you look now, look at it now, we can, we can love on people. Oh, I just love that man. I, I just love that man. And that same man, phew, Jesus, might be, if not physically abusing you, verbally abusing you, mistreating you, not showing up like he used to show up. Those strolls in the park in the beginning of your relationship, you don't walk around, you don't go to the park no more. You're not sitting at the same table again, and Lord knows we're not even laying in the same beds together. I'm talking about as married couples. Oof. We have to live according to this word of God. You can't live your life any kind of way and expect God to bless you. And if you're placing limits on him, you're placing limits on yourself. Are you hearing me? So, so we have to be able to ask ourselves, am I limiting what God can do? Am I limiting what God can do for me? Are you limiting what God can do for you? you got to ask yourself that now. Because until you can, you know, get the answer... You know, sometimes we seek the Lord in prayer and we'll go in our secret place, if we have a secret place, but we'll we'll get down on our knees and we'll pray to the Lord, Lord Jesus and so on and so forth. And, and then, you know, we get right back up and, and then we go about our merry way and we just go about our way and Lord, uh, you know, and then we'll look around and God, when are you going to send what I asked for? When are you going to do what you promised? And so on and so forth. But you didn't stay down there long enough to wait for an answer. Because we've allowed ourselves to get caught up in the, in the, in the, let's just say, in the flow of what's going on in the world. You're in the world, but you don't have to live like the world. You are a man, woman of God, and God has called you to some great things. Lord, 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 Lord. Am I lacking the faith needed to go forward? Am I lacking that God kind of faith that's needed to, to go forward with Christ? To stand in my purpose. To press through my trial, my test. 
You know, because let me say this. God has a supernatural plan for you. He has a supernatural plan for you. So now, I, now when, I say, when I say a supernatural plan, and, and, and understand now, you're included in that plan. He has a supernatural plan, and he's included you in that supernatural plan. Now, when we're talking about supernatural, let me make it plain. We're talking about a plan that is operating above and beyond the natural realm of man's understanding. Well, God says his ways are not our ways. As high as the heavens is from the earth, that's how different we think. We can never fully know the mind of God. We're flawed in our thinking. Even as Christians, because we can talk a good talk, but if God is not moving fast enough for us, or for me, for you, we sometimes take it upon ourselves to do what we feel needs to be done. And then there are times we'll say, well, the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that, and I'm so sure it was God, and it could have been the devil. Why? Because I don't know enough about the Word of God. I really don't have a discerning spirit, and I'm allowing myself to be uh, drawn away by my own stinking thinking. Because I want it so bad, I just got to have it so bad, and, 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 and I, I just got to I gotta change something. He who waits upon the Lord, mm, mm -mm. he who waits upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of an eagle. There's some stuff God won't take you over. You, know, you, don't have to, you don't have to drag yourself through the muck, in the mire, through the mud, come up dirty and filthy. When you think about how the Lord had the Israelites walk through that Red Sea, the Bible says, uh, you know, that, that Red Sea, that when after he parted the waters, he dried the ground because they walked through that Red Sea and they didn't come out muddy on the other side. No. Why? Because God, God will make sure that, you know, he'll get you where, you, where he wants you to go. I'm not going to say he'll get you there without damage because some of us, oh, Lord Jesus, we're going to find ourselves dealing with affliction, addiction, and all kind of stuff. But because of the faithfulness of God, and because of the mere fact that we're not placing limits on God, God will see us through to the end. Where can you go from his presence? Are you hearing me today? Understand, there's no place you can go. There's nothing you're going through that God doesn't already know about. And if he's allowing you to go through it, it's because he's there with you, he's there for you. And he's allowing you now to work your faith in that situation so that you can grow past it, so that you can, you know, experience, whew, experience his love. And sometimes his love could be tough love. Mm, mm, mm. Because the Bible does say he'll chastise those that he loves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and what, what God is doing is unexplainable. And can be perceived or seen as abnormal. That don't make sense. But we're talking about God. See, because his ways are not our ways. So that doesn't make sense to me. Why would God take me that way? Because if the truth be told, we want to take the shortcut. We don't want to go through that hurt. We don't want to go through that trial. We don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with him or her. I don't want to stay in this church. And maybe that's where God wants you to stay. Because as much as you think they need to change, God might use that church to change you. God might use those people, those difficult people that's hard to get along with. Though He will use those people to change you. To change your attitude. See, and that's really what this is about. See, we can be truthful, might be in the habit of trying to change God. God is going to be God whether you like it or not. Whether you stay with him or not, he's going to still be God. But don't forget what I said earlier. Now, apart from him, we can do nothing but with him all things are possible. That's if you're not placing limits on him. Don't place limits on God and don't place limits upon yourself. Why? Because I'm talking about an awesome God. You know, and, and how you see God says a lot about what you think he is able to do. How you see God is, is going to lead to what you think he's able to do. 
Mm -hmm. How do you see God? Do you see God as that awesome, amazing, miracle-working, wonder-working God? Or do you see God as that someone that want to work sometimes? The Bible tells me he never sleeps and never slumbers. Just because he might not be working in your life, that doesn't mean he's not doing something in the body of Christ, in the kingdom. You might not be in the kingdom the way you might think you are. So much can be going on in our lives that can be a distraction, that can cause us to, let's just say, uh, move away, move away from the blessing and not into the blessing. I hope that I hope you're getting something from this message today. And if nothing else, remember, don't limit God. Don't limit God. Don't limit God. That's what I want you to leave with today. That message, right? Don't limit God. Because when you place limitations on God, you're placing limitations upon yourself. And I'm here to tell you now, you're better than that. You, some of you, you are better than what you've been living. For some reason, I don't know what it is. You know, if you're honest with yourself, about yourself, you, you know you could be doing more than what you're doing. You, you know that you, you've allowed yourself to settle for, for that, 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 that stump, that log or whatever. And I'm sitting on that log and I'm waiting and watching or, or I might be sitting in my window watching life pass me by. God didn't send you here to be a, a spectator. He sent you here to participate. Participate in life. He wants you to be a part of what's going on beyond your window. He wants you to see yourself as a, as a, as a, per, as a person of destiny, a, per, a person that is able to make a significant mark in the body of Christ, in the life of someone else. Whether it be your child, your friend, your co-worker, or that someone in the ministry, in your church, you, you have to be able to see yourself as making a difference, a positive difference now. Because we all can make a difference, either good or bad. You want to be able to make a good difference. You know, you want to be able to make a positive difference. You want to be able to be that model, that role model, for your kids, that role model for those in your neighborhood, in your community. Yes, that's a man of God. That's a woman of God. How many times have you stood on the line or, uh, at a supermarket or at a store or something and shopping and someone standing behind you waiting for, waiting to get up to the cash register and, you know, you and that someone uh, standing behind you might have started talking and, and start talking about Jesus. Why? Because it's just something about uh, you know, that, that their spirit that is telling you, that's my brother, that's my sister in the body of Christ. I see it in their face. I see it in their attitude. I see it in their, de in their demeanor, in their mannerism or whatever. And, 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 and you, know, we, you know, you have to be able to discern and know that you are amazing. You are amazing. I, I can tell you you're beautiful. I can tell you you're wonderful. But I'm here to tell you today that you are amazing. Often imitated but never duplicated. You are a designer's original. There's not another person on the planet like you. And God is telling you to take the limits off yourself. Don't put no limits on him. And step up in faith and see what God is now able to do in your life. If uh, Let me pray for you now. Father, we just want to thank you for this day. I thank you for the leading of your spirit. I thank you for your amazing grace. I thank you for reminding us today, Father God, at this hour, at this moment in our lives, reminding us not to limit you, not to place limits on you, because when we place limits on you, we place limits on ourselves. And Father God, because of our love for you, Lord, I ask, Father, for the forgiveness of sin, not just for myself, but for my brother, my sister, that's viewing this program today. Those who may have been operating in doubt, double-mindedness, or fear, I pray, Father, that you would forgive them and that you will grant them a fresh start and a new beginning. I pray, Father, that as they take the limitations off of you, 
they'll take the limitations off themselves and that they will begin to, to rise above the adversity, rise above the, 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 the stinking thinking and the doubt and the stuff that they may have allowed to build up in front of them. And what was a molehill, they've allowed it to turn into a mountain. But I'm asking you, God, to give them the wings of an eagle. Help them, Father, to fly above, to rise above, those things that are designed to keep them down. And Lord God, I just thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. And I pray that favor, 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 your favor will bless. I pray that your favor will bless them, Father God. Meet them at their point of need. If they're viewing this program and they're dealing with the infirmity, with the, with the sickness or disease, I'm praying, Father God, that you lay your hand on their body right now. Lay your hand upon their bodies. I pray, Father, that you will regulate every organ, every muscle, every tissue, every cell, and every fiber of their body in the precious name of Jesus. And dear God, I just want to say thank you once again, Father, for uh, my subscribers. I want to thank you for those viewing this program. I want to thank you for my friends, not just here in the United States, but my friends across the ocean, those in Europe and in England. I want to thank you for the Beeson family, Father God. I thank you for the beautiful, uh, the beautiful uh, message uh, email that I received from her this week, Father God. I pray even now, Lord God, that you will just bless those viewing this program today. May your word continue to manifest in our lives and manifest in our lives in a way where we'll be able to see whew, your glory. We come to honor you, to praise you, to magnify you, and to thank you, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for loving us. And we ask this now in Jesus' name, amen. In Amen. Yes, I believe.